Oi, oi, this thing right here makes me feel like Tim the Toolman Taylor. It's a full-size mower. It's an electric motor that runs off this 56 volt battery. And the fun part is you control it off a remote control. So MoRadar sent this out for me to test and review. I've been using it for the last month. I've been using it in a few different scenarios just to see how capable it is and where I see it being used more often. At the moment, I believe the pricing for these in Australia for the pre-orders is $4,074. So I wouldn't call this a cheap option. But we'll run through a few things and I'll show you where I do think it does perform. And I'll also run through a few things that I'm not a big fan of. So let's just get straight into it. Let's open up the top. That's the main battery. When you want to charge, you just pull that out and then you attach the charger. The recharge time for this battery is 90 minutes. You can get it down quicker if you do get the supercharger. If you wanted to remove the battery altogether, maybe you want to charge it inside the house. Pulls out nice and easy to put it back in just as easy clip that back clip that in close the lid to turn it on we're going to hold that down until all the lights come on now this is on close it up you've got lights on the side to tell you that it's on you've got the emergency stops on both sides make sure they're pulled up to start it we'll turn it on the first thing it'll do when it turns on is ask for a pin so I've still got it on the standard pin that it comes with, which is 888888. Then I'll come up with some instructions. We'll turn it on and then it starts to pair. It's paired, so it comes up with green. First started using the S1 MoRadar, there were quite a few things I wasn't quite happy with. I did contact MoRadar and the fortunate thing was that they had already put into effect an update. So we have updated this, and this is gonna be the first time using a couple of those new functions. So I'm very excited to utilize those. Unfortunately for myself, it was a little bit difficult to update because I have an iPhone and a MacBook, and they are not compatible with the MoRadar, unfortunately. So you do have to find an Android phone or a computer that has Windows, and then you can get the update done. So we are all up to date, so let's start cutting. So it's pretty self-explanatory, it's like any RC remote back forward side to side this is a zero turn so as you can see it turns directly on that back wheel depending on which way you go down here you control the speed so we can go slow or we could go medium or fast at the moment you can see it goes slow in reverse so that was one of the updates luckily if we go to settings go to advanced and we can go down a reverse limit turn that off and now that will go the same speed forward and backwards and so one of the things i wanted that changed for was because i didn't find the automatic u-turn to be as good as it should be. It wasn't returning directly on the last line that I ran. And it seemed to maybe only work when you went to the left or was it to the right? It was only on one direction. It would actually line up with the last track that you did. So we're gonna try the U-turn again here and hopefully that's a little bit better. But if not, now we can just go forward and backwards, which actually will save us a lot of time. You won't even have to use that U-turn feature. While we're here, we'll go through all the other bits and pieces. We've got a lot of sensors on here. You've got the tilt sensor. So when it goes on a tilt too much on a slope, it will cut out. So you've got that. You've got the distance detection, rear cover sensor. So you can turn all these on and off. It will give you a warning. With the new update, you've also got different sensitivities for the ultrasonic, which is the sensors. So this has sensors all around, which will pick up anything that's in the way. So if I drive it towards myself at full speed, that's full speed, it's not letting me go any closer. But one thing I did find last time was anything small, I think I had a ball in front of this, it didn't pick it up. So I'm gonna give it a go just with this little tripod. We'll put it here, we'll roll it forward. And it is picking that up. You can see my hand is all the way forward and it is stopping. Thought I'd give that a go with the ball again. With the update you can see it doesn't stop for the ball still so there's definitely a few things that it won't stop for i'll show you the u-turn it's quite easy all you need to do is press one of the buttons so that's left or right u-turn it'll come up with this there you press ok and it does a u-turn so we'll do the other way so i'll see if this has changed at all with the update so you can see where this line is here. We want this to be exactly the same, but going the other way 
as if you're doing a U-turn to go back the other way and mow. So we'll do this, just note where that wheel is. That looks very good. We'll go the other way now. So we want this to line up with that back wheel when we do the U-turn. Got to admit, that looks like it might be better. So we'll go do a few runs and we'll see if that's changed. This is what we're cutting. You can see it's very long. We're probably looking, what's that, 150, maybe 200 mil high on a lot of this stuff. So let's start the mower up. All we're going to do is hold the two top buttons, press start. You do only have to hold down one button. Once you let that go, it will turn off. So hold them down. Let's go. So as you can see, this is why when you have the longer grass, you're definitely gonna have to turn off some of these sensors. So I turn off the ultrasonic sensor and then it'll pass through. So we'll go again. You can turn the voice off as well. You can see the cut there, it is very good. It's definitely as good as any of your other rotary mowers, but I should have done this first. So you do get the catcher and you've got this here, which is the mulcher. And then we'll put this on, or we might even do a run without the bag just to show you how much comes out because it does come out and it just drops on the bottom. So that's at full speed. If you want to get a nicer cut sometimes, obviously a little bit slower is probably better, but for this sort of surface, you can see it's dumping on the ground. Does a nice cut, nice and quick. But we'll put the bag back on. Let's do a quick U-turn. Okay, so this was where I had some of the problems. So because the ultrasonic sensor is off, because it's long grass, if I want to do a U-turn, it comes up saying that you need the ultrasonic on. So we'll have to turn that back on now and then do a U-turn. And obviously because that is on, when I put the U-turn on, it's not gonna do it because the sensor's on. So that's definitely something that's a little bit annoying, but with the new feature that you can go fast in reverse, that's what's gonna be the big change on this. So we'll turn that sensor off. So that really means that the ultrasonic sensor is good when you have lower grass that won't be picked up by the sensor. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go up straight and then we're just gonna come back on a bit of an angle and then follow that line. And that way we can just go back and forth nice and quick. You won't have to do a U-turn and it'll also protect the grass because when you do do a U-turn sometimes, I have found that it digs up the lawn because this is a zero turn mower. And that's definitely problematic for some areas if you really have a pristine lawn. I've done cylinder mown lawns where they're only about 10 mil high and I would not really want to have that on there but in these sort of aspects where you're doing a little bit higher mow um, you're not going to really see those little divots i think this is definitely definitely a lot better in reverse it's definitely a little bit harder to control in reverse because it's rear wheel drive but as you can see we don't have to do that u-turn So this is the other function as well, haven't really utilized. You press that one. Uh, once again, you need the sensor on, forgot about that. So if we turn the sensor on, turn the mower on, and we hit that top one, it will go forward all by itself. And as you can see, it's going forward, but the sensor's on. So it's like a catch 22. For this sort of area, you're going to have to do it manually. So this is the limit of how far 
you can be away from the mower until it will cut out. We've got one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, it's bang on twenty meters. So I do think in areas like this, it is definitely a mower that can come in handy. If you've got a lot of trees, a lot of slopes. If you do have the sensors off and you do bump into something, it will stop. As you can see, it comes up with the red light on the side and it will come up with a warning which you have to clear before you can start it again. I wanted to put it through a couple of other situations, including going under some obstacles like a trampoline. Usually you would have to move the trampoline or you wouldn't be able to get to it. Worked perfect in that situation. And then I was able to find this slope. It went up and down perfect. I had no worries whatsoever. I did have to slow it down when coming down the hill though, because it did want to take off a little bit quicker. And then while we were up on that slope, I wanted to throw it into some of the rougher stuff. You can see we've got all clippings and long grass here. And once again, I had no worries. You can get the four wheel drive version, but this two wheel drive did quite well. So lastly, I just wanted to try it on this lawn. So you can see we're only looking at about hundred square meters. It's not much at all. So I wanted to show you how long it'll take to get through it. I have let it grow over the last two weeks. I'm just gonna go on a medium speed back and forth nice and easy and we'll see what sort of cut it does how long it takes and whether it's worth getting something like this for a yard that's this big all right so after watching up to here what are your thoughts so far for myself it's definitely a solid mower that works well and can get most jobs done i could see it being extremely useful for those that need to get into the more unaccessible areas when using your average push mower if you've got slopes or larger areas where pushing a mower could be difficult and strenuous, or if you're someone that just isn't mobile and can't physically push a mower, the Mowrator would definitely be perfect. I do admit it is nice not having to sweat while getting the mowing done for a small area like this, but I'm not sure if I could justify the money for this size yard with no obstacles. I am gonna give this automatic forward button a go. As you can see, it works fine when you've got the sensor on and you don't have any obstacles in the way. We're gonna go back and forth and I'm also gonna start using the U-turn button again. We're gonna try this on the front lawn and it does seem to work quite well. It all lines up nicely. So I don't know if that was a problem just with the area I was on originally or if the update fixed it, but it definitely does seem to work quite well here. full bag all right so this is a few weeks later we've swapped over this blade they sent out a low profile blade so it's going to cut it's probably about almost three centimeters lower so we'll give that one a go and see how much better the lawn looks Definitely rather this height. So if you are looking at getting one of the mowers, maybe look at getting the lower profile blade. So I do hope that this video was somewhat helpful or at least a little entertaining. I do think this is a pretty cool machine and it's cool to see where the technology is going. I would love to hear your thoughts on the mower if it's worth it and how you would utilize something like this. And I would love to get a bit of feedback on the video and how I could maybe make this better. But until next time, stay addicted to tools.